Where do the Polish people really come from? For centuries, this has been one of Europe's greatest mysteries. Some say the Poles are the pure descendants of the ancient Slavs. Others believe their roots go much deeper. Back to the very first settlers who walked the forests and plains of prehistoric Europe. Now, for the first time, DNA is revealing the truth. And what scientists have discovered is nothing short of shocking. So stay with me until the end, because we're about to uncover the hidden story of Polish DNA, a story that rewrites everything we thought we knew about where the Polish truly come from. But before we dive in, let me ask you a question. Do you believe Poles are the original Slavs, or something far older? Tell me in the comments. For thousands of years, those hunter-gatherers roamed freely across this land. Their world was wild, wolves, bears, and vast forests that stretched for miles. Archaeologists call them the Western hunter-gatherers. But that's just a label. In truth, they were the ghosts who shaped Europe before history began. Their DNA tells us they were short, strong, with dark hair and piercing blue eyes, a combination that still exists among some Poles today. Then something changed. Around 6000 BC, new people began arriving from the south. They were different. They brought something unknown to Europe, farming. They planted wheat and barley, raised goats and cattle, and built small villages near rivers. Scientists call them Neolithic farmers, and their arrival changed everything. At first, the hunters resisted, but over generations, they mixed, traded, and married. Their children carried both heritages, the endurance of the hunter and the patience of the farmer. This blending created a new kind of people, more settled, more organized. For the first time, Europe was changing, not by war, but by mixing. And deep beneath the Polish soil, that mix can still be seen. When scientists study ancient bones, they find both hunter and farmer DNA. But peace never lasts forever. Around 3000 BC, a new force appeared on the horizon. A people who came not to settle, but to dominate. They rode horses. They used metal. They were fierce, mobile, and unstoppable. From the endless grasslands of the Pontic Steppe, the vast region between modern Ukraine and Kazakhstan, these warriors began pushing west. Archaeologists call them the Yamnaya. They were the first great nomads of history, the people who tamed the horse and carried war like a storm. For centuries, they moved slowly, tribe by tribe, until their descendants, known as the Corded Ware culture, reached the lands that are now Poland. And when they arrived, everything changed again. The newcomers brought new weapons, new burial customs, and, most importantly, new genes. Their DNA spread across Europe so fast that within a few centuries, most of the male bloodlines had been replaced. It was one of the most dramatic population shifts in human history. And here lies the shocking part. Modern Poles still carry the clear genetic signature of those steppy warriors. Nearly half of the Y chromosomes, passed from father to son, come from those same lineages that rode west 5,000 years ago. They were the ones who also brought with them a new kind of language, the ancestor of almost every major tongue in Europe today, the Indo-European language family. In other words, the same roots that gave birth to Polish also gave birth to Latin, Greek, Sanskrit, and English. When we say, Stepe blood runs in Polish veins, it's not a metaphor. It's literal truth written in DNA. As centuries passed, the Corded Ware people settled across Central and Eastern Europe. They built villages, raised cattle, and buried their warriors under great mounds. Over centuries, steppe nomads, Neolithic farmers, and native hunters mixed. Out of this fusion came the first Proto-Slavic people. By 1500 BC, these people had already developed unique traditions. They built fortified settlements. They worshipped the sun, rivers, and forests. Their culture was deeply tied to the cycles of nature. Harsh winters, fertile summers. When historians later use the word Slav, 
They were describing not a nation, but a continuum, a long, unbroken chain of people stretching from the Carpathians to the Baltic Sea. And in the center of it all stood the lands that would become Poland. The Slavs who eventually filled these lands were tough, communal, and deeply spiritual. They lived close to the earth, in wooden huts near rivers, surrounded by forests that seemed alive with mystery. They had no written language, but they had songs, stories, and rituals that bound them together. When outsiders came, Germanic tribes from the west, Baltic tribes from the north, the Slavs held their ground. They adapted, traded, sometimes fought, sometimes mixed. This is where the Polish genetic story becomes fascinating. Even though Poland as a country didn't exist, its genetic roots were already forming through these encounters. When scientists today test DNA from ancient skeletons found near Krakow, they can trace the same paternal lines that run through living Poles. When we talk about Polish identity, we're talking about people who came from hunters, farmers, and riders, each leaving something behind that never truly disappeared. Even the Polish language, rooted in the same Indo-European family that once spread from the steppes, still carries whispers of that ancient migration. Every word spoken today is a living fossil of that journey. Every nation likes to believe it knows where it began. But the story of the Slavs, the ancestors of most modern Poles, doesn't start with a single event or a single tribe. It begins in silence, deep in the forests and rivers of Eastern Europe, somewhere around 2,500 years ago. Archaeologists call it the Przeworsk culture, a network of villages, farmers, and warriors living across what is now Poland. They didn't build vast empires or write in marble. They lived close to the land. These early Slavs were the children of two worlds. To the west, they traded with Celtic tribes. To the east, they brushed against steppe nomads, horsemen who swept across the plains like ghosts. They learned from both. And through this slow mixing of blood and culture, the roots of the Slavic identity began to grow. There's something deeply mysterious about the Slavs. Unlike the Romans or the Greeks, they left no grand monuments. Their power wasn't in empire, but in endurance. When others rose and fell, Celts, Goths, Huns, the Slavs remained, slowly expanding, quietly spreading their language and carrying their traditions from the Vistula River to the Carpathian Mountains. Centuries later, another influence entered the Polish genetic story, Germanic tribes and Viking raiders. It's hard to imagine Poland without its Slavic core, but for centuries, it sat at a crossroads between the Nordic world and Central Europe. Around the first century, the region saw the rise of the Goths and Vandals, powerful Germanic peoples who lived on what is now Polish soil before migrating south into the Roman Empire. When scientists studied ancient remains from those times, they found genetic markers that still appear in modern Polish populations. Traces of this Germanic blood, especially Y-DNA haplogroups like I1 and R1b, hint at centuries of contact and intermarriage. But the story doesn't stop there. In the early Middle Ages, a new force came from the Baltic Sea, the Vikings. They weren't just raiders, they were traders, settlers, and explorers. Along the rivers of northern Poland, Viking ships sailed inland, blending with local Slavic communities. Archaeological finds in Wolin, a city once known as Jomsborg, tell this story vividly. Weapons, coins, and Norse-style jewelry lie buried under Polish soil, proof that Scandinavian warriors once walked these lands. Genetic studies even show a small but distinct Scandinavian component in the Polish gene pool, especially in northern regions. It's subtle, but it's there, a reminder that the Polish story is not purely Slavic. It's woven with threads from the north. These northern men left more than just genes. They left influence. Polish rulers of the early Pius dynasty built their kingdoms through trade and alliances that often included Germanic and Norse ties. The mixture of Slavic heart and Nordic steel gave rise to something unique, a people who could fight like warriors but think like diplomats. So, when we talk about Polish DNA, it's not one color. 
It's a mosaic. Slavic resilience fused with Germanic order and Viking courage. That's what made Poland strong enough to rise and survive in a continent that constantly shifted beneath it. In the 13th century, the sky itself seemed to darken. From the far east, a storm rolled across Eurasia, the Mongol invasions. Entire kingdoms burned as the armies of Genghis Khan and his descendants tore through Russia, Hungary, and Poland. When the Mongols reached Poland in 1241, towns like Krakow and Sandomierz fell to their fury. The Polish knights fought bravely, but they were facing an army that moved like a machine, fast, organized, ruthless. After the battles, the Mongols vanished as quickly as they came, but not without leaving a trace. For years, historians thought the Mongol invasion was just a military event, brutal, but temporary. Then came genetics. Modern studies found that a small but measurable portion of East Eurasian DNA appears in parts of eastern and southern Poland. It's faint, maybe just 1 to 2 percent, but it's there, a whisper of the steppe. This discovery fascinated scientists. It suggested that some Mongol soldiers stayed behind, intermarried, or that later steppe groups, Tatars, Cumans, and others, merged with local communities during the medieval era. That same eastern steppe DNA also links back to the ancient Yamnaya people, the Proto-Indo-European horsemen who thousands of years earlier helped form the Slavic genetic base. So, in a strange twist of history, the Mongol storm didn't just bring new blood, it reconnected Poland to its deepest prehistoric roots. From east to west, the Polish genome tells a story of return, waves of movement across the same vast steppe, echoing across millennia. But this period also changed the Polish psyche. The memory of invasion and survival became part of the national character. In every generation afterward, Poland would face outside powers, from the Teutonic Knights to the Soviets, and yet, like their Slavic ancestors, they endured. That's why Polish DNA is so fascinating to scientists. It reflects not just genetic history, but human endurance. It's a map of everything Poland has survived. Invasions, migrations, alliances, betrayals, rebirths. You can almost feel it in the air of the country itself. From the mist over the Baltic coast to the quiet forests of the Carpathians, every place carries echoes of the past. Every face, a mix of old bloodlines that somehow found harmony after centuries of chaos. In a sense, Poland isn't just one country's story. It's Europe's story condensed, the meeting point of East and West, North and South. Through its genetics, you can trace the whole drama of the continent, the rise of farming from the Fertile Crescent, the migration of the Indo-European tribes, the spread of the Slavs, the clash with Vikings and Germans, the impact of the Mongol Empire. It's all there, in every Polish chromosome. Scientists often say DNA is like a time capsule, but when it comes to Poland, it's more than that. It's a mirror, showing not just where the people came from, but how they survived everything history threw at them. Maybe that's the real secret inside Polish DNA, not who they descended from, but how they endured. Every ancient influence, Slavic, Germanic, Norse, Mongol, became part of something greater. In the end, the genetic story of Poland isn't shocking because it's strange. It's shocking because it reveals what we always suspected, that nations aren't born pure. They're forged through contact, conflict, and constant rebirth. Polish DNA is living proof that identity isn't about isolation. It's about the meeting of worlds, Europe and the steppe, and is the truest legacy of all. The history of Poland itself, from ancient settlers and Slavic tribes to Viking traders, Germanic neighbors, every chapter has left its mark on the Polish genetic code. If you've enjoyed this journey through the unique DNA of Poland, let us know in the comments. Have you ever taken a DNA test and found out you have Polish roots? Or maybe you've always wondered about the origins of your family's features, the light eyes, the strong faces, the proud spirit that seems to run deep in Polish blood. Share your stories, we'd love to hear them. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more history and DNA content, 
and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thanks for watching, and as the polls say, do Zobachinia. Goodbye for now.